Welcome to 101. I'm Rick Kaplan, and my guest today is Bill Widener. He is with Keep My Gas, and we're going to find out what Keep My Gas is all about. How you doing, Bill? Good. How you doing, Rick? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me today. Oh, it's my pleasure. It's always great to talk to you, Bill. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about what Keep My Gas is all about. Yeah, so uh, Keep My Gas, uh, I mean, I guess when people think about that, they're not necessarily wanting to keep their gas. But we're talking about we're talking about natural gas, natural yeah, it gas have that to be with Taco Bell or anything. No, no, nothing like that. Nothing like that. Um, and you know, this this keep my gas is really a product of a ongoing habit that I have of reinventing myself, and I want to talk a little bit about that. Uh, I've been doing it for the last 40 years. I've done it six times, always in some aspect of the real estate industry, residential brokerage, appraisal, general contractor, commercial brokerage, coupled with podcasting on commercial brokerage, and now what we would call local law compliance. So what I find is that this ongoing adaptation to new skills and the career capital, and most importantly, the relationships that compound along the way, always seems to be the foundation for the next venture. So at this point, I finally accepted the fact that whatever I'm doing today, whoever I'm meeting today, whoever I'm interacting with, what I'm learning is going to support tomorrow. Getting back to keep my guess. A year ago, I noticed that there was a new local law that was passed in 2016, so not so new, but it was newly going to be enforced by the Department of Buildings starting January 1st, 2020. And Local Law 152 is titled the Periodic Inspection of Gas Piping Systems. And my brother's a master plumber, a licensed master plumber in the city of New York. So I said, Doug, what is this? And he explained it to me. And I said, are you going to be doing these inspections? And he said, yeah. He says, uh, as a master plumber, I don't have to, but I'm going to take this course. I got to buy the device. And I thought about it. And you know, like when that little bell goes off in your head and it says, this is something you need to pay more attention to. Well, that's exactly what happened. So my brother and I sat down, we strategized and we came up with kind of a grand vision that we knew we weren't going to be able to execute right away. And that we would first have to do kind of a prototype and a uh, proof of concept sort of strategy. And so we began to work around that and do research and uh, gather everything that we possibly could on the internet and have conversations with people. And, uh, and it was funny because on January 30th, right before everything started to change, uh, I attended a CRE prop tech event that Rebney put on. And one of the guests on the panel was Kevin Danahy. And Kevin is the global head of corporate development at Brookfield Properties. And he said something that really, really resonated with me. He said, gather data and then create solutions to serve. Gather data and then create solutions to serve. And I thought about it at this point in January, now two months into our idea and starting to do research, that that's exactly what we were doing. That this was going to be confusing to people. Uh, that there was a huge marketplace three to 400,000 buildings over a four year period. And then starting all over again after that, and that we really had to pay a lot of attention to this and execute it. Then the shutdown happened. We actually wanted to launch in April. And of course we know that everything changed in the middle of March. And I remember on Saturday, March 21st, I went out, I live in a financial district. I went down to the battery park area, no cars on Broadway, nobody in the park. Nobody on the riverfront. And I took a bunch of pictures and I put them up on my personal Facebook page and I wrote a statement and I said, in our collective moment of pause, may we learn something that we otherwise would have been distracted from. And I really didn't understand the magnitude of that statement until what it is that I learned over the last now eight months. And First of all, all the Zoom and video conferencing, I mean, I didn't even know how to do this. And now, you know, we're kind of all experts at it. And it's really a new way of doing business. 
uh, learning how to use graphic arts program and create presentation slides so that you could actually do Zoom webinars and meetings and moderate things. Uh, creating a uh, pandemic relevant podcast, because I have a podcast, Realty Speak, creating pandemic relevant podcast content, uh, doing a startup business at the beginning of midsummer. Uh, but most of all, I realized that the only thing that we have control of is what we think and how we act, how we choose to act. Everything outside of us uh, can only change that perspective if we allow it to. We all have the free will to choose how we're going to perceive something, look at it, and react to it. And now four months into, uh, you know, the new business, I realized that because my brother and I took a, a different perspective and said, hey, you know, we're in the middle of a pandemic, but, you know, people are going to need to have this done and we need to get it up and running. So we launched it in August and we're doing very well. We're very excited about it. By the way, if anyone wants to check it out, you just go to keepmygas.nyc. That's keepmygas.nyc. And this pertains to buildings that have gas piping systems. And it also pertains to buildings that don't have gas piping systems. And we have a lot of information on the website with regard to that as well. <clears throat> and there are deadlines uh, that have to be met, depending on what community district you are in the five boroughs. And for 2020, it's community districts one, three, and 10 in all five boroughs. And so people that are in these community districts are finding out that they have to have this inspection done. And there's really not that many people out there doing it. Uh, there are probably about 1,500 licensed master plumbers in the city of New York. Some of them are doing it. Some of them have companies where they have people that work for them that are doing it uh, as well. Uh, certain qualifications are required. Uh, but if those people are qualified, they can do the inspections as well. Uh, and uh, we're finding that there's a tremendous demand. And we feel that that demand is going to continue through the end of December uh, when the deadline is over. We're not sure whether or not the Department of Buildings is going to ex extend it for the 2020 community districts. We hope that they do because we really don't think that because of the pandemic, it would really be possible based on the demand and the number of people that are actually out there qualified to do the inspection uh, that all of them could be done. And there is a $10,000 fine if you don't have the inspection done and file. So I really hope that the Department of Buildings, and if they're listening, <laughs> I hope that they, they say, you know what, we're gonna, we're gonna extend this and maybe everyone that was in 2020 has until June 30th, 2021 to do it. So Bill, what are you expecting, inspecting? Uh, so, yeah, so uh, it's a two-phase inspection. We're going out and uh, using, well, when I say we, my brother, he's a licensed master plumber. He's actually the ones that does the inspections. And by the way, he does the inspections under his plumbing company, DW Plumbing. Uh, and then Keep My Gas is really more of a consultant and a facilitator that takes care of all the logistics. So what, it's a two-phased inspection. And uh, Doug goes through the hallways and all the common areas, not in the private tenant spaces, not any private residential tenant spaces or any private commercial tenant spaces with a portable combustible gas detector. And that's kind of sniffing to see if there's any gas seeping into the common areas from a private area. Assuming that that's not the case, then he goes into the area of the building, which is typically the basement or the subcellar that has all the exposed gas piping, the point of entry, and the gas mechanicals. And he does a visual inspection on that. And he also does this inspection with the portable combustible gas detector. And uh, assuming everything is okay, there's a report called the GPS-1, which gets filled out and is transmitted to the owner. And then there's a GPS-2, which also gets filled out, and that's a certification that the inspection has been done, and that gets uploaded to a Department of Buildings electronic portal. And we take care of that, and we fill in our information as the uh, representative that the owner authorized to go ahead and do that. And then they get an email from the Department of Buildings. We get an email from the Department of Buildings once it's been filed. Uh, then we transmit the electronic documents to the owner. And then we mailed the hard copy documents to the owner. And the hard copy documents have to be sealed with the plumber's raised seal 
and then signed with a wet signature. So that adds a little bit more time to getting everything done because you got to fill that stuff out, print it out, sign and seal it. Then you got to scan it and then you got to do the filing and then transmit everything to the owner. So it's basically checking to make sure everything is working properly and there's no leaks. It's a safety, yeah, it's a safety inspection. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, and I would say that uh, about about 10% of the buildings might have like a repair or something that they have to do, but they have, you know, four to six months to do that. Uh, if there's a leak, you got to call the utility. Uh, if there's excessive corrosion or some kind of illegal, dangerous connection, you got to call the utility and wait till the utility comes down. And then they make an assessment whether or not they want to uh, do anything with the gas at that point, a partial or a complete gas shutoff. We've actually called the utility three times and they've never shut off the gas. Two were for excessive corrosion and one was for a gas leak. And the gas yeah. leak, they tightened a nut, was National Grid. They tightened a nut. Then there was no more gas leak. Everybody went home. Everybody right. So most fine. of the time, it's a, a uh, property owner doesn't have to pay for those type of repairs. Uh, well, that's... well, I mean, if there's a repair required, right, some kind of change that has to happen in the piping or there's something that is no longer code compliant, they're looking at the 2014 code, uh, it's a safety inspection, right? If the plumber sees something that impacts safety, then the plumber is going to report it on the report. It's going to indicate that something needs to be corrected on the GPS-2. They actually, the GPS-2 actually that goes to the Department of Buildings does not ask for a list of what needs to be done. And then the owner has four to six months to get that done. Unless it's an emergency situation, then you have right. to file an immediate, uh, uh, an, an immediate, immediately for a permit and go ahead and, you know, get that fixed right away. And yes, of course, they would have to pay for those repairs. No, but I'm saying if it's a uh, part of the, a lot of times the gas piping or meters and things like that, there could be issues, but that a lot of times is taken care of by the gas company. Oh, so we had an example like that, actually. Uh, one of the uh, buildings that we went into, it was the large pipe that was at the point of entry and it was excessively corroded. Matter of fact, it was so corroded that when Con Ed came in to fix it and they touched it, it crumbled in their hands. Obviously, they had already shut the gas off before they did that. So, you know, we called them. They came down. They looked at it. They said, you know what? This is our pipe. We're going to fix it. So that probably saved that owner about $8,000. But that, but, but most of the piping in your gas piping system is your piping and your responsibility. It's inside the building. Right, right, right. Well, Bill, that's a lot of information to take in. Uh, <laughs> you know, and how long has this been in place? This, uh, well, the uh, law, the law, the law was uh, finally passed late 2016. Uh, but the Department of Buildings and the City Council and some of the other stakeholders like the Messer uh, Plumbers Council, the City of New York Plumbing Foundation, uh, all kind of strategized, well, how are we, you know, there's three to 400,000 buildings that are impacted by this. Uh, how are we going to spread this out so we're not trying to do it all at once? And that's when they came up with the community district idea. Oh, so really, in 2020, so it's giving, only, I'm sorry, go ahead. So they're only giving it till the end of 2020 to get it inspected? Well, for community districts one, three, and 10, oh. then there's a whole new set of community districts in 2021, then another set of community districts in 2022, and then the final year will be another set of community districts in 2023. And then the people that had it done in 2020 will then start to do it again in 2024. So it's a cycle. It's like the facade law, which I believe is a six-year six cy uh, six cycle where you have to have your facade checked. And, and then if, uh, if uh, there's a problem, you got to get it fixed. And then you have six years before you have to do it again. So we want everyone to know where they can get the information again. So why don't you give us uh, that website? All right. So it's uh, keepmygas.myc, K-E-E-P-M-Y-G-A-S.myc. And is there a telephone number? They yeah, they can, yeah, they can call me at 917-232-8529. That's my cell phone number. It's the only number I have. Uh, you can leave a message. You can text me if I don't pick up, 917-232-8529. And if you want to email me, it's bill at 
keepmyguess.myc, B-I-L-L at K-E-E-P-M-Y-G-A-S dot M-Y-C. And Bill, you are, you're still doing your, uh, your uh, podcast? Still doing the podcast. Okay. Actually, the last podcast that I did was with you. With me. Oh, great. <laughs> yeah. And it came out <laughs> in September. Best. And the we've been so, we've been so busy, I haven't had time to do another podcast. So, so if someone wants to listen to your <laughs> podcast, how, how would they listen to your podcast? They yeah, they would the just go to my they go to my real estate my commercial real estate website, uh, which actually is kind of cool. It has a, a COVID nineteen real estate blog with a lot of information about COVID nineteen and a collection of webinars uh, that uh, were online. You know, April, May, June, July, August, September. Uh, October. I don't think I posted anything there from November. And they, you can look at some of the past webinars. And what's cool about that is some of the icons in commercial real estate invited us into their homes via Zoom. Right. And you got to hear conversations from them that you would never be able to have otherwise. And so I, I you know, the pandemic is a, is a difficult situation. There's no doubt about it. And I hope everyone out there is healthy and safe. And, and in some cases, it's been tragic with the loss of life. I mean, that there's just no way to, you know, want to or try to justify that. That's a horrible, horrible thing. But that's not something that we have control over. No, so, uh, but right. we're, and, but everyone's so, dealing with it. Right. So it. you got to deal with it. You got to choose how you're going to deal with it. And, uh, and, and I think there was, there's a lot of positive things that are coming from this because it's getting people to think differently. You know, oh, remember I sure. said in our momentary, in our collective moment of pause, maybe we learn something we would have otherwise been distracted from. And exactly. we get so, we get so deep into our routine and how we're doing things and the way it is that we almost need something like this to break our pattern so that we step back a minute and take pause and say, hey, maybe this should be done differently. I mean, think about all the people that are going to be working from home now and are never going to go back to an office. Yeah. I mean, that's uh, it's a whole change of life for yeah. everyone. Yeah, for sure. You know, some for people sure. are embracing it and some people are just saying, you know, I can't deal with this. You know, And, you know, I can understand both sides of it, you know. Of hey, course. But we're in it. We're all dealing with it, and we're going forward. That's yeah. all we can do. Yeah. I want to thank you, Bill. Great interview. And, you know, uh, Thanksgiving is coming up. I wish you and your family happy Thanksgiving and be safe. Well, I wish I wish you, Rick, a happy Thanksgiving. Of course, everybody at the New York State uh, – I'm sorry, the New York Real Estate Journal and the, and the New England Real Estate Journal. And, of course, uh, all your listeners – and your advertisers and just everybody out there. Have a happy Thanksgiving and be safe, be healthy, be cautious. And Rick, thank you so much for having me today to talk about keepmyguess.nyc. Thank you, Bill.